What you just heard was Disturbed with the Asylum on 90.7 The Music FM. On to some more basketball talk. Um, the Syracuse Orangemen um, is in serious jeopardy of not making the playoffs this year. They're having a pretty so-so year. The, the, the best ball standing. Look at the, 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 the stat. They're in loss record. They are currently um, seven and nine in the conference. Um, eight, which is eighteen and eleven overall. That's probably not gonna cut it. So they gotta try to win the ACC tournament. <coughs> it's the fourth consecutive time that Orange fans have keep kept them in pins and needles. Um, it is they're being projected as one of the first four teams out by Joe Leonardo. Why does this keep happening? It's simple. Syracuse has been pretty consistent the past four seasons. However, hovering around 500 year in, year out in the prestigious ACC. Oh, that span. The orange record stands at 35 and 35. Winning about as many games as you lose in a multi-bid conference is usually a pretty good indicator of a bubble suspense. And while that's happening with Syracuse of the season, the orange will finish regular season at Boston College and at home against Clemson. Losing both those games will leave them at seven and eleven in the ACC, and that's a bad. Uh, that looks bad for the bid. But again, but then again, this is not the program style. A better showing to close the regular season, prolonging the the guests throughout the ACC tournament, seems much more in character. By now, any air potential bubble watcher has surely learned that no team in Division One attracts bubble drama quite like the Orange. Um, on that metric, Syracuse. On that metric, Syracuse ranks number one in the. In the um, Nation. Um, here are the are the teams that are locks. Probably are Virginia, Duke, North Carolina, and Clemson. Teams that should one team that should be in is, the, is Florida State. Leonard Hamilton is hoping the committee doesn't dwell on the FCU at North Carolina game because losing by twenty in rally was not the Seminoles' best look. <coughs> the good news is for fans that Tallahassee in Tallahassee. The good news for the fans in Tallahassee is that the team has the perfect chance to prove otherwise in the game against the Wolfpack. The game against the Wolfpack was the outlier. A win at Clemson this week should give Florida State's profile a boost that could potentially lift Knowles higher than the current project spot, which is number 7 and number 8. It would also give FSU an excellent chance of finishing above 500 ACC play. Miami is another team that should be in. Bubble Wash wishes to strongly emphasize this quote, should be in selection, unquote, title with regard to the Hurricanes. It would take an absolute perfect alignment of sinister events to keep this team out of the tournament. <coughs> still, the projected number, still, as a projected number nine seed about to play on a road game in North Carolina, Miami will want to seize the opportunity to improve its record position. The Hurricanes' other remaining game is, is, a, is at home against Virginia Tech. Hosting the Hogies isn't a quadrant one opportunity, but beating an NCAA tournament level opponent hurt in your season never hurt in your season finale never hurts. NC State. Not many forecasters would have predicted the Wolfpack to be a ten and six in ACC play heading into the final week. <coughs> they put themselves into a field of four straight wins and something fairly significant would have changed for the team to deny an at large bid. Remaining games at Georgia Tech and at home against Louisville likely won't change much in this pitch. To change this pitch it much. No, an 0 2 finish wouldn't be optimal, but NC State body of work, went, which was concludes Wiz at home over Duke and Clemson and won the road against North Carolina, <coughs> speaks for itself. And it's been a near idea deal for the season for head coach Kevin Keats. Louisville should be in. This late in February, Louisville's play like a survival uh, was on the line at Virginia Tech, and it was very likely the case. Starting with a little more than eight minutes remaining in the game, the Cardinals drained six straight three, six, six straight three point attempts and turned a five point deficit into a seven point lead. The Cardinals won 75 to 58. Louisville is very much alive with the fresh quadrant one to win to its credit. Now, David Pritchett's team perhaps faces its equal measures with promise and peril, winning against Virginia at home and against North Carolina State and Rally. Would not be only to put the cards in the field, but would do so putting the momentum on a better seed. Going 0 and 2 there, however, could return the team to a sheer survival mode heading into the ACC tournament. On to Syracuse. One very once one consequence of what's plainly a very good Syracuse defense 
is that the Orange turnaround play on uh, uh, play offense and scoring comes primarily from three players: Tyus Battle, Frank Howard, and Oshi Oshi Brissett. Lead it to the opponents. F- f- five guys going just three. Five guys guard just three. If yours is a tough way to go, and showed as Duke as Jim Williams guys lost sixty to forty four. Yet this is a very good defense. Not this very good defense. Not so much offense from Syracuse. Still is still on Leonard's first four out list. Games at Boston College at home against Clemson remain at, at a. Remains opponent. Uh, 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 has it been a ranked opponent? The Syracuse has to beat a ranked opponent and is still 79 in the ACC. Locked for the Big 12 are Kansas, Texas Tech, West Virginia, and TCU. Teams that should be in should be Oklahoma. The bleeding has finally stopped at Norman. Oklahoma ended its six game losing streak by beating Kansas State 86 to 77. Bubble Watch has to think that it was a much bigger deal for the Sooners than we'll ever know. Oklahoma is still in the hunt for at number eight. We'll see with games at Baylor and at home against Iowa State remaining. Missing the field entirely might be theoretically possible. Finish, oh, an over two finish would put the Sooners at 7 11 in the Big 12, but it's a far less likely scenario after the win against the Wildcats. Kansas State. The Wildcats would likely have a 7 or 8 even at large bids taken after them in the bracket if the field was announced today. So, yes, the loss at Oklahoma was a missed opportunity, but no, it doesn't detract from the fact that the Bruce Brothers guys are good in a good place. Um, certainly, the Big 12 gives its members. Um, Plenty of chance to because uh, the members plenty of chances to improve their seed and perhaps Kansas State could do just that. And at TCU at home at Biggs Baylor, a win either contest would earn Kansas State above 500 finish. Teams that have work to do are Baylor and Texas. Baylor has maintained its membership for the last four in list for this weekend's after this weekend's loss to TCU. The Bears host Oklahoma, and finally the Longhorns are were already walking out. The thin line between in and out on the bracket before Mohamed Bamba missed the 87 loss with a toe injury. Now Cheka Smart's team is 17 and 13 with the help and the health of its one and done track star is in doubt. Texas finishes 2017-2018 against and with West against Austin. Big East the locks of Villanova, Xavier, Butler, Creighton, Seton Hall. I think Providence should be in. They have consistently maintained four to five team cushion in its cut line. Beating a projected number one seed on the road is the best profile and proven um, measurable for any imaginable team. In it. It's the best profile and proven measurable for any, imaginable for any team. And Providence should have a shot pulling it off. The Musketeers have a benefit of a huge free throw disparity in the Big East play, but the far as having to be the league's next best team in that department. Um, Marquette's next. In theory, the Golden Eagles should be a bubble wash memory, but by this point, this is a team that lost to DePaul a few days ago and the now sports record 16 and 12 on 7 9 in the Big East. All true enough, still the season sweep over Sweeten Halls plus the road wins at Creighton and Providence still not there on Marquis' profile. That's not that they're going out to on its own at a large bid. But finishing with a win at home is Creighton can at least continue the conversation. Teams that worked, um, Mich- teams, um, Big Ten, um, Locks of Michigan State, Purdue, Ohio State, Michigan. Nebraska has work to do. One reason why the Cornhuskers are and the Gary 13 and 5 big record are not strong in the bubble position is because Nebraska has just beaten just one large, a large opponent, which is Michigan. The possible fate that, that they given Nebraska something on a break is in that department. If the brackets hold together in the Big Ten tournament, the Cornhuskers will play the Wolverines on Friday. No other number one t- quadrant number one t- opportunity was possible. <laughs> Chances arrive for the Cornhuskers. For the pick, Pac-12, Arizona, and Arizona. Arizona is the only lock. Arizona State should be in. Bubble Watch doesn't make a habit of devoting much attention in late February to teams that won in Kansas on the neutral four against Xavier. Discussions should be unnecessary by then. But again, Arizona State is not making a habit of winning in February. The Sun Devils have dropped three straight games. A skid that's very likely to come to an end when they face Cal. Assuming they beat the Bears in the season finale at has Stanford will determine whether the Devils finish 9-9 in Pac-12 or 8-10. Um, that's, uh, we, got, we got a lot more. T- um, what are your thoughts on college basketball? Hit me on Twitter at jredshow. I think Utah should be in. Washington should be in. 
SEC, um, you got the locks in Auburn, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Arkansas should begin. What well, just one game removed for Arkansas of a 15 point loss to Kansas City. The Razorbacks recorded a crucial quadrant one victory over Alabama. The way puts them in the running for a bracket for line high for, for, to avoid number one seed potential. Speaking of a quadrant one, that's all Arkansas will be able to see from this point. Florida, winning at home against Auburn was a big and perhaps too easily overlooked for the Gators. Florida closes its regular season at home on the road in Alabama. The Gators are causing in an unusual degree of disagreement across various projected brackets, coming in is from 6 to 9. Texas A&M should be in, Alabama, Missouri. Mississippi State has work to do, so does Georgia. Finally, the American Conference. Um, St. Mary should be in, Middle Tennessee should be in. St. Bonaventure has work to do. The Bonnies should be on the right side of the cut line, but they face a dicey conclusion in regular with a, to a regular season with games against Davidson and St. Louis. It might be less tense if they were closing into a season against the Atlanta Tens to the bottom tier against two teams far strongest. Nevertheless, this has been the, bot- the hand the Donnie's have been dealt with. The final line I think Boise State should be in. What are your thoughts on basketball? Hit me on Twitter at JRedShow. And finally, one more thought about basketball. The NBA MVP. We, talk- we, had, the- we had these two suspects, Steph Curry, LeBron James, Kevin Durant. But I think Anthony Davis is making a out the look. To make a case. Um, he has 34 points, 12.2 rebounds, 2.8 steal, steals, 2.1 blocks per game. He's shooting at 50%. Look, MVP trophies aren't one, one in a few weeks. They're not even one over the course of two months. If the season were to start today, James Harden should be the league's MVP. But doesn't. There are 20 games left, and Davis deserves some real consideration. We've been overlooking Davis the whole time. He was just in, he was incredible on Monday night. Davis was second only behind James Harden in points. And the reason we look over look Davis is because he's on a he's on the New Orleans Pelicans. He's not on Cleveland, he's not on Golden State, he's not on Houston, not on Boston, not on Toronto. He's on the New Orleans Pelicans. Who's having um They're 34 and 26, which is good, but it's nothing special. Cousins getting Hurst makes Davis an even more compelling candidate. There's no question that C- Cousins and Davis were stellar together when Cousins was healthy. They can pl- Kyle each other, they can pl- complement each other and create opportunities for one for one another that they wouldn't get otherwise. But with Cousins out, Davis has seen an increase in responsibility. Normally, when it comes to production, he tends to dwindle on, and Davis has a bit. But he's managed to somehow be highly effective. Um, the Pelicans aren't winning enough though. Um, the M- but the MVP is an individual award. One one player doesn't make a team. Steph Curry has a lot of great teammates. LeBron James has a lot of te- great teammates. Anthony Davis does not. And if it wasn't for Anthony Davis, I think the Pel- I think the Pelicans would be a terrible team. What are your thoughts? Hit me on Twitter at jredshow. We've got 10 minutes left, so we have last chance for a quest. Come next is Shadow Moses with with Bring Me the Horizons. He won't like what said the music of him.